Good morning. We are back with our business I am. Uh, for those who are having coffee, then it's time for you to put your mugs aside because things are about to get trickier for you this morning. So the question is, what are you waking up to today? Ask the big question. A lot happens in the political sector. A lot happens in the health sector. But the question that we keep on asking is, how does this affect the weight of the money in your pocket? And that's why we are doing this every single day. I'm getting told by Stephanie that all this and many other more shall be available tomorrow onwards. Critical conversations, critical points that make you think twice about your decisions money-wise. All right, we're going to go directly into the first item that you are waking up to this morning. Bank staff salaries hit a record 100 billion shillings. All right. Even as the corporate laws exist, all right, even as banks are trying to come up with different ways to sort of navigate these laws and still remain profitable. Yeah. Guess what? We still have this headline. 100 billion in 2018, all right? Yeah. And an upward of over 430 million shillings from 2017. What is going on? No, I think uh, the, the increase is uh, purely marginal mm -hmm. in, in the industry, consider, considering what has happened uh, mm -hmm. ever since we had the interest rate caps. Mm -hmm. And if you read through the, the statistics carefully, you'll see that uh, 23 b banks actually increased their, their, their wage bill, mm -hmm. and 17 banks increased. Yes. And you'll see that Kenya Commercial Bank had a very big decrease, over 2.1 billion mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in staff wages. And you'll see that NIC Bank also had an increase and uh, they're attributing that to the expansion they've had. Mm -hmm. And I think it's from uh, preparations for the merger between uh, NIC and CBA and uh, Commercial Bank of Africa. Yes. So really we can't read so much. Mm -hmm. if, if the increase was uh, very wide in terms of salaries, uh -huh. we could have said then uh, something is happening. Mm -hmm. But then again, it, it tells you the, the kind of thinking that the banks have. Mm -hmm. Banks are entities that have focus on profits. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the idea has been that with the interest rate caps, mm -hmm. we need to look for a way of actually be able, being able to make profits. Yes. So we've seen deductions in, 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 in terms of employees. Yes. And of course, then they can also not avoid um, direct inflation increases in salaries, which happen uh, almost every year, mm -hmm. which probably might have led to that increase. Mm -hmm. So b banks are still operating well. Mm -hmm. They're making profits. Yes. And... Uh, Probably the, the issue of the interest the cap, rate caps is uh, just a baby cry. It's just from a baby the cry, isn't it's it? From the banks. Because we're talking about increasing wages. Of now they are just about to hit a record 100 billion shillings. Yes, yes. That's huge, yes. isn't it? Yes. All right. No, yeah. mm -hmm. For them, for mm -hmm. them, for the for the banks, what they have done yes. is that they quickly looked for a turnaround mm -hmm. in terms of a, a business model that can be able to work yes. within the interest rate caps, mm -hmm. and that has actually worked for the banks. It has actually worked for the banks. Yes. So we can, we can assume that the whole thing about cap laws is just a baby cry from these banks because if they're making this much, they are getting profitable. Yes. All right. Most of most banks they've they've not given us profit warnings other than the National Bank that sort of gave us a profit warning the other day. So you can actually say they're doing fine. Yeah, the banks are doing, actually the cry regarding the interest rate caps is not focused on profitability of the banks. Mm -hmm. It focused on uh, cred, uh, the issue of uh, access to credit in the country mm -hmm. because uh, it has actually affected how SMEs are able to access credit. Yes. And of course the issue of also um, people losing jobs mm -hmm. because of uh, what we've seen in the industry. Yes. That, the focus is on that, not on the prof mm -hmm. profitability yes. of the banks, because the banks, the banks are doing well. The banks are doing okay. Yes. Let's look at some uh, uh, data that we get from this announcement. Equity, mm -hmm. which is a top, uh, top tier bank, tier yes. bank in yes. the country, yes. was able to cut 20 million in wages, yes. all right? Yes. Uh, other banks also took to alternative banking methods mm -hmm. to sort of jump in and find working ways around these laws. But then the thing is, staff 
competition that is stealing talent yes. from these other banks, which now analysts are saying this could be a reason why we're seeing these wages. A bank sort of trying to replace the three people, five people, with one person who's got the sort of expertise they need to sort of drive them to the agenda. I think alternative banking methods are the ones that are working for the banks. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the banking halls, banks are focusing on uh, uh, ag bank agencies and uh, digital methods of using banks. Yes. Because most of the people who go to the bank probably go to deposit or withdraw things that you can be able to do from an agent mm -hmm. who is not an employee of the bank yes. or from an ATM. Mm -hmm. And that has helped the bank in such a case whereby if some staff leave, then they don't have to replace them. Yes. But then again, staff stealing of, of especially staff at managerial levels is common in banking, mm -hmm. and I don't think that can actually affect the salaries yes. to the level that uh, we are seeing uh, that has been reported. Yes. Yeah. So what what is this thing that uh, let's just lay ground to this conversation? Therefore, in 2017, we didn't see this much in terms of wages. In 2018, we expected them to go down. Do we expect to see them keep on rising? Does sort of cutting down um, on your staff in one way or another mean that you're therefore sort of the ones that you're leaving behind, giving them more responsibilities, more, um, more duties that sort of now demand for payment and increases? I don't. Ex uh, I expect banks to focus on um, on using technology mm -hmm. to reach their the clients. Yes. And thus, there may not be need for massive recruitment. Uh -huh. And remember, we're also having uh, issues of mergers going on in the in the banking industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my fear from the mergers is that we may have uh, very m massive staff layoffs because if NIC Bank and uh, CBA bank come together, mm -hmm. then they may have to reduce their branches. Of course. Because you end up to a shopping mall where both mm -hmm. of them have a branch uh -huh. and they don't need the two yes. once they merge. Uh -huh. So we may see a reduction in terms of salaries mm -hmm. due to those mergers. But we also need, we actually this year we'll of course see stability in, in, the, indus in the industry mm -hmm. in terms of profitability and the salaries. Yes. So we may not see so much change mm -hmm. other than the change that will come from probably staff layoffs mm -hmm. due to the mergers. And of course banks continue to invest in technology yes. to reach uh, their clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Just when we're talking about technology and alternative ways of trying to find uh, ways to work around these laws so now banks remain profitable. Stan Chet, yes. yesterday, he launched Innovation Lab to collaborate with fintechs. The question is this. Kenya, we would say, has a banking culture that they're trying to change now yes. due to these laws. Um, it remain profitable, sort of find alternative ways to cut down on expenditure and make more profit. You would say that one way is to lend to the government, which has been um, majority, which majority banks have used to remain profitable, yes. actually. Now, Stanchet goes and launches a fintech club. Would you say that acquiring the, uh, the services would be better than Stanchet launching their own? Mm, uh, business outsourcing is what is key in the economy right yes. now. And yes. uh, most organizations are moving away from trying to set your own uh -huh. and uh -huh. looking for an expert in that area mm -hmm. so that you can be able to partner with them. Yes. And that is how fintech comes in because Stanchart traditionally is not in the business of setting up such fintech is. Mm -hmm. So they have partnered and the focus of Stanchart in this case is actually be able to see how they can be able to improve mm -hmm. their client um, experience. Mm -hmm. And they want to, of course, uh, use technology, innovation, to be able to, to reach that, uh, that level. And that is what, happening, what is happening in the banking sector. It's only that Stan Chat have gone a, a notch higher and set up the, the Accelerator Lab, mm -hmm. which is a first one yes. in Africa, uh -huh. and it's something that I think is commendable. Mm -hmm. And, of course, puts that uh, in another level as a country yes. when it comes to technology. When it comes to technology yes. in banking. Yes. When you look at the banking sector, um, and when you look at the Kenyan economy, the Kenyan customer, yes. isn't it? Yes. The one who uses the banks. What sort of technology would you expect uh, such a kind of innovation labs and accelerators to come up with? 
No, of course, what we, we, we want uh, clients to embrace, mm -hmm. uh, the idea of uh, not going to the bank, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, being able to use their mobile phone, yes. their computer, mm -hmm. to interact with the bank, yes. including making payments, mm -hmm. requesting for checkbooks, and all those things. Mm -hmm. So, and banks, that is exactly what banks are focusing on, yes. pushing their clients mm -hmm. to using the gadgets that we have. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Kenya has the highest in terms of mobile phone penetration in the world. Mm -hmm. most, most So many of the Kenyans use uh, mobile phones mm -hmm. and that is what the banks want to capitalize on. So the moment you can you push people away from the banks, you can be able to see profitability increasing and of course fixed costs going down because having a bank and managing a bank in itself, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And most of the services that we, are, we, we need do not necessarily need you to go to the bank. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, now the, the fintechs have been um, known to sort of look at the banking sector and drive innovation around every aspect of the banking sector. Yes. Uh, whether it be it deposits, checks, and whether it be the customer relations and yes. all that. Yes. Would we move to a point where we're saying that the Kenyan banking sector, despite internet penetration and technology penetration now, and IT as well, would you say that we would have a well operationalized uh, banking sector that really 100% relies on technology to drive its resources. No, we'll get there. I mean, when you look back 10 years ago when I was yes. in campus, mm -hmm. I used to walk around with a passbook. Yes. And I, I could only withdraw money from my branch, which was a post bank, the right branch. Uh -huh. I could not get money from another branch uh -huh. because there was no local area network and to, to connect there, the wide area network to connect the banks that time. Yes. Now, 10 years later, checks are clearing within two days. Uh -huh. Uh, you have RTJ systems, which mm -hmm. we didn't have. Yes. People are able to access monies from their mobile phones, mm -hmm. including deposits and withdrawals. Yes. And tra the traditional banking uh, model is actually disappearing, mm -hmm. and we are embracing technology. Uh -huh. And as a country, we want to see a level whereby most of the users of banking services move to that level yes. so that banking becomes easy. Of course, then fintech have to address issues like artificial intelligence uh -huh. and mm -hmm. issues of cyber security, yes. which is also key mm -hmm. in, in, in such issues. Yes. Yeah. So that, that brings me to the, next, uh, to the next and last final question on this. When they look at the cost, because you're trying to address a culture that has been used to going to the bank. Yes. Now, we do have a lot of agents across Kenya now. That's yes. something that we've seen uh, come up in the banking sector in the country where you can sort of get banking services, nearly almost all of them, from just an agent yes. seated right outside your door. Yes. So now, since we're talking about technology and, and sort of making it more efficient to that side, yes. Would you say that this would also have an implication cost, therefore, because there will be a lot of sensitization and training and sort of sort of assimilating the client base in the country to this sort of technology that we want to rely on now? No, as long as it's for good cause, I don't think uh, institutions mm -hmm. are, have a problem investing in the technology. Yes. The cost might look high, but in the long run, uh -huh. the, the, you have a lot of savings. Yes. And ease of access of services is something that is key mm -hmm. because there's a, there's a cutthroat competition in the banking sector. Mm -hmm. So you must be able to compete with your, with the, with the banks that uh, operate in the industry mm -hmm. and you must be able to leverage on technology. Okay. How, however high the cost might be, mm -hmm. in the long run, it will also be definitely be very cheap yes. for the organization. Okay. Yeah. So now I want us to move into the next one. Windsor pays um, hostess 2.6 million for sucking over pregnancy? Question, even before I go further, mm. is that enough? Uh, we see, uh, <laughs> courts will definitely calculate. Yes. And I, I, I read through the article yes. the day before yesterday. Yes. And how it has been calculated for me, I felt it's fine. It's fine? Based on her, on her, on her position uh -huh. and the kind of package that she's been given, yes. it is fine. Mm -hmm. It will never be enough, especially when you, comp or when you consider emotional yes. stress. Uh -huh. From, uh, from such a sucking, mm -hmm. but then again, there has to be a method. There has to be a method of calculating that. Yes. And the judge has done it. It is up to, to Windsor to either accept or of course now be able to go to a higher court mm -hmm. to, to hit back yes. or appeal. Which opens a conversation. Yes. Are Kenyans really aware yeah. of the labor laws and constitutional rights they have before taking up employment. 
No, I think what happens is that we might be aware of the laws. Yes. But employees are normally put in very desperate situations. Uh -huh. That uh, job creation in the country has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. So there are no jobs. In any case, people are being laid off in industries. Manufacturing sector, uh, companies are closing down. Yes, yes. So an employee in a very desperate situation will actually take whatever that comes his way. And companies have become clever enough in such a way that they draft their employment contracts to suit them. So when you read some of the clauses in the employment contracts, they're actually legal mm -hmm. because they actually don't claim with the labor laws we have and the constitution. Yes. But they want to use that so that they can be able to box in the employee and accept whatever that comes, yes. which is actually wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's good that uh, most of the employees who've been in the sector have actually taken their time to understand what their rights are yes. when they're in employment. Yes. Yeah. When, when I look at, um, I, I was trying to sort of look at uh, some of the contracts that have been given personally yes. um, in other job areas that I've worked in, then yes. I found that the key ones are missing. Here's the thing, um, there's some that say this, um, you can only be fired, mm. right? Yes. You can only get fired immediately, therefore, if there is misconduct. Yeah, true. And misconduct also mm. comes at a certain level because you have to be listened to as well. And there are different levels of misconduct under these clouds as well. Mm. And then poor performance, which is now relatable. And then we have physical incapacity, all right? Yes. And then we have retrenchment, yes. which must come eventually. Yes. But now, illegal strike participation, these are the clouds of the people that are never included in the contracts the majority of Kenyans are given mm. to sign when they're seeking for employment. And now the last one that I found really interesting is that if you work at night, your hours should never reach 60 hours. But now we have cases of people who even extend beyond the 60 hours. Yes. So now, should you feel that your rights as a worker they're getting violated, and some clauses here have been broken. Upon receiving of that contract, I know you have the right to sign it or not sign it, mm. but you need this employment. Yes. What are the steps that you should take to make sure that those clauses are inserted inside there? I, th I think, as we've said before, uh, jobs don't come easy. Yes. And uh, as an employee, you mm -hmm. have to wait. Yes between rejecting to sign uh -huh. or seeking clarification yes. and of course losing the job. Mm -hmm. So most of the people will sign even without re reading the clauses uh -huh. because what you want is the job. Yes. And you very well know that the law protects you. So if some of those clauses are illegal, the company actually cannot be able to sack you on the basis that you signed that contract even when the law, when whatever clauses that are in that contract are illegal. Yes. Because inserting illegal clauses in the contract does not actually sanitize. It doesn't sanitize. The, 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 the activities of the company. Yes. Uh, what I can say about illegal strikes is that uh, most of us employees are not uni unionizable. Mm -hmm. For those who are in unions, mm -hmm. they are more of protected yes. by the unions. Mm -hmm. And unions do a very good job in terms of uh, protecting their, 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 their members. For those who are not unionizable, therefore, we are actually very exposed because it becomes a challenge uh, going for a strike mm -hmm. or, or such things. Yes. So we, we just hope that the, the, the economy can be able to expand enough so that we can be able to have more choices in terms of employment. Mm -hmm. So that if you get a contract and you feel you cannot be able to work with the conditions that are attached to that contract, then you just refuse it at that point. Yes. Or you negotiate. Yes. Because people at middle level or senior management level mm -hmm. are able actually to negotiate. Yes. But at low level, especially entry entry level jobs, you cannot be able to you negotiate. Cannot be able to negotiate. You yeah. have to take what comes. Yes. Yes. All right. Now, um, listening to some experts say, look, um, it might be a feminism, a feminism approach, mm. but I listen to some experts say, look, um, this is a case of um, sexism at the workplace. That it's easier to overlook cases mm. that come when you have women working with you because you have to contend with them at some point leaving you for a long time mm. to tend to family issues, especially maternity leaves, all right? Yeah. As opposed to men who, in other cases, get, get even shorter paternity leaves. Would you actually have a look at this case and, and approach it from a different angle and say, look, I think she has a greater point than just getting fired. This is sexism now at the workplace. 
No, I think the, the, the wind circus exposes uh, mm. what uh, our women go through in employment. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you've interacted with uh, especially women who work in the banking sector, they face very many challenges. And the issues of maternity come in because if you are a manager, for example, at a branch, and you're a lady, and you have to go for three months maternity leave, and probably you'll want your leave days also, okay. which is probably another one I month. And on top of that, uh -huh. the branch will do away with you for four months. Yes. So the issue happens is, at, for these four months, you remember you're being paid a salary, mm -hmm. the bank will need a replacement for the four months, someone who can be able to stand in. And that is where the challenge comes. But then we must be able to respect creation as it is and allow women to be able to go through that process without them having to fear for loss of their jobs. Because it's not just a lady at Windsor. So many ladies have lost their jobs. Uh -huh. They mm -hmm. have been demoted yes. because of staying away mm -hmm. from employment for a very long time. Yes. But be, the big organizations actually have a system whereby they actually ha support the ladies when they're going through that. Mm -hmm. But from an employee point of view, I'll feel it's unfair. But from an employer point of view, mm -hmm. sometimes it's, it's a catch-22 situation whereby you have someone you've employed and you know that for 12 months you will miss that person for four months in full mm -hmm. and probably she will work for another half day for another two or three months. Yes. It is a challenge, but it's something that you have to live with. It's something that you have to live with. Yes. All right, let's move over to the next one. This is a big story. Boynat sworn in as a tourism. All right, let's, let's just leave it at that. Do you think it fits this position? You know, yesterday when I was watching and on a light note, yes. and when he was being sworn in and he approached the president, uh -huh. I thought he was going to salute. Because <laughs> I, I, I expect him to have forgotten that he moved from the police force. He was really a uh, sort of... Uh, I know, you know? He yes. actually didn't salute. He so. didn't salute. <laughs> Yeah, it was. But again, uh -huh. it, it, it takes you back to how the system works. Yes. I don't expect as a young person someone to retire and then immediately f get a job. Yes. And yet we are saying that the, the, the unemployment there rate is, is very high. There is unemployment in this country. Yes. Remember, he is retired, isn't yes, it? Yes, he actually He's is retired. back again to service. Yes. And it's not the first time that we've seen the president yes. sort of make this move. No, the we question that we keep on asking the president is... Yes. If you've served the country in a given capacity for a given period, mm -hmm. and you've done well or you've not done well, what assurance do we have that you can be able to give us better input, a better, a better output in an, uh, serving in another position? Yes. People should learn to retire and rest, mm -hmm. because that is actually key in employment. Yes. At one point, having reached the level that uh, Joseph Boynet reached, it is sometimes important that you go home and rest, so that people can be able to look back and enjoy the good things that you did. Yes. Because if there's a problem between now and probably 2022 when you will be serving as uh, the CS, CAS at, uh, tr at tourism, mm -hmm. we may actually be able to, we may forget the good things he's done. Because he's managed to do some few good things here and there. Mm -hmm. But he actually should have rested so that someone else can so take So somebody the job. else can take over. Yes. Somebody would argue this. Uh, look, um, this is a man, despite his um, other positions which have known have been in service mm. all right he has a lot of um, he has a lot of um, background into what he's doing right now look he's got um he's got a two masters mm. in diplomatic studies so hold on that he's got a two bachelors in international studies and diplomacy yes. okay now people will say look one of the key factors that affected um, the Kenyan tourism and continue to affect tourism across Africa is insecurity. Yes. Now look, between 2011 to 2017, we had 60 attacks in the country yes. done by different entities. Yes. All right. Now, there are plans, therefore, to increase uh, tourist arrivals from 1.7 million. That was a plan back in 2012 to 3 million in 2017. What do you say that the president looked at this man Yes, he's got this international um, diplomacy background. He's got international relations background. He served under the security docket. You can actually say he served in the, in, in the armed forces docket. Yes. Would you say that that is what sort of triggered the president to say, look, if I'm looking to have someone who can sort of sanitize this biggest threat to Kenyan tourism, it's him. I think that is the thinking the president had mm. when he appointed him to be the, the head of the police in 2013. 
<laughs> the question is, did he achieve that? Did he achieve between that? Between 2014 yes. and 2019? Yes. To some extent, no. Yes. So he is not going to do it as a civilian working in a ministry. Uh -huh. He'll not, he's not going to do it. In any case, when you look at qualifications, mm -hmm. I know of so many of my friends out there who even have PhDs. Yes. Young people, 35, 40 years, who are actually rearing to serve the country and they're not getting the opportunities. That's, that is the question as young people that we must be able to pose mm -hmm. to our leaders. Yes. We cannot continue recycling leaders based on their performance, yet you're not giving young people opportunities who have very good ideas mm -hmm. to be able to, to implement those ideas. Yes. We can't. President came out and said, young people are the most corrupt in the country. He is on court yes. saying that. Where does he get that sort of understanding from? No, let him take the young people to court. Yes. I have not seen young people being taken to court mm -hmm. for corruption cases. If you look at the, the, the way the system is, the people who are involved in corruption cases are people at very senior management level. Mm -hmm. I have not seen so many young people rising to that level. Yes. Young people are being stifled by the old mm -hmm. and they're holding low positions, yes. hoping that one day they can be able to rise. Mm -hmm. So they may be in the system, they may be assisting the, senior peop the people in senior management level to actually perpetrate corruption. But they're not the ones who are driving that uh, vice. Yes. It is the people who have been in the system for so long mm -hmm. and have the kind of connections that you need to be able to pull off uh, a kimwaror yes. uh, in the country. Yes. yes. All right. Just sticking to tourism, um, another headline that we're waking up to this morning. Anthrax it has killed 10 buffaloes in Nakuru. There's a disease outbreak in that area. Yeah. So the question is, where should the government target first? Is it the parks? So now we get tourism up to level. Is it to the homes? So now we can get this. We know that anthrax is a deadly disease. Yeah. And if it's there, then everything is affected. Meat consumption and all that, it should be put on the stop. Where should they start from? I think the move that uh, the vet department has done is a good thing mm -hmm. in terms of moving to the parks yes. and vac vaccinating the animals mm -hmm. and also trying to quarantine them to a level that that anthrax does not move yes. out of the park mm -hmm. to the do domesticated animals, yes. which of course we use as uh, the meat products, mm -hmm. because that would be deadly if, if it happened. Mm -hmm. And we just hope that they can be able to have a system, a multi agency kind of approach mm -hmm. to ensure that we don't lose the wild animals yes. and at the same time we don't uh, endanger the human beings through a spread of uh, anthrax. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Lastly, mm -hmm. today on the Metropole Review, as from uh, 6 p.m. today, mm -hmm. all the way to 11 p.m. Wednesday, if you are not bought tokens for your electricity bill, you'll be in a blackout because KPLC is shifting. Now listen, this is the big question, yes. the big headline. In one year, seven times switch offs just to migrate or upgrade to another system. Let's talk about the seven times. And then let's talk about this happening to a company that is under question over its collection methods. The issue that KPLs has had for a long is actually what is being exposed by what they're doing. Yes. We've had very corrupt individuals at uh, KPLC. Some of them, of course, they're facing court cases now mm -hmm. with the CEO and a whole lot of uh, line managers. Yes. And it points to a level whereby they never thought through the kind of system they wanted to use to run the prepared system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they went for a system where they could get kickbacks and the system never worked. So they are having now challenges of having to keep on doing something to the system yes. so that it can actually be able to perform. Mm -hmm. And that points at the procurement uh, procedures that we've had at KPLC. An organization, the level of KPLC should be able to invest in a very good system. Yes. Something that can be sustainable for 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. Of course, with minor changes, because systems, of course, have to be have upgraded. Have to be upgraded, yes. isn't it? But mm -hmm. we don't want to have the kind of upgrade because we see Safaricom doing the same yes. and the other companies that rely on technology, mm -hmm. they do upgrades. Even banks close yes. on a day or Saturday mm -hmm. to actually do the upgrades. Yes. But the fact that it has happened seven times seven then... Seven times in a span of one year. It raises right? the issue of reliability of that yes. system. And yes. then the thing is, during these turnoffs, remember, they have lost 192 billion shillings. Is that not such yes. a high amount of money to make somebody think, wait, we need to think of a better way yes. to sort of go around our upgrades. 
Well, I think, okay, the, 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 the other challenge that KPLC have is they have a live system. Mm -hmm. A live system in, term, in, in, in a way that we are using it every minute. Yes. Dealing with a, such a system is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, if you switch it off for a few minutes, you may not be able to achieve what you want to do. Yes. But now with the new management at KPLC, I hope they'll be able to relook at the issue, realize that we actually rely on KPLC, and come up with a system that can be able to be sustainable for a long time. Right. Because the systems are out there. Mm -hmm. But the question I want to ask Kenyans, have you bought your... Have units? you bought your tokens? Have you bought your tokens? All right, have you bought your tokens? Or you'll have a dark or night. Or you'll have today. a dark night. Yes. You know, I know how it feels <laughs> for you not to have lights and your neighbor has lights quite quite uncomfortable guess what if you have not bought the tokens run because kplc is going to turn off its prepaid service in just a few hours all right so that now they can actually start upgrading the system we just hope that once they are done with it you'll be back on the grid and so if you are at work and you never bought them call your caretaker call your family members who are at home i know your kids are at home right now tell them we need to buy the tokens just to survive all the way to Wednesday 11 p.m. On that note, we end the Metropole Review. To a business am. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiage. I would like to think of myself as a creative. What I do is creativity. My mind, my life is sort of created or formed around what I say, how I present myself. Then that means I am a creative. Business-wise, you can't look at Simba and say, he's a journalist. No, that guy is a creative. That's what the industry recognizes me as. They will say, I am a trained professional. That's it. But when you want to identify me, you'll say, I'm a creative. But in journalism or in media or in the creative sector, there are many things that usually happen for us to have a product. You'll have sound people, you'll have script guys, you'll have copy editors, you'll have graphic designers, you'll have the artists, the actors, the directors. There are so many ways that you can think about this. The World Bank recognizes that the creative industry is a multi-billion dollar industry around the world. Now we have studios like Hollywood, Nollywood, that are leading in terms of revenue amassion across the globe. Which therefore makes you think the question, how can a Kenyan creative get a bite of this cake? Which also begs another question, since it is business, and business has its rules, laws and regulations, business has a blueprint that you cannot break, how do I learn it? How do I know the gaps to fill? How do I know how to attack it? How do I know how to present myself in a way that is going to sell me the proper way? Today on Business AM, we have two gentlemen who are going to help us understand this. Mr. Nyagata. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Roy, yes. how are you doing, man? I'm doing fine. Have they given you coffee? Of course. They've given you coffee. But, uh, yeah, we, we, normally, we normally try mm -hmm. to sort of, but it's 
still sunny, so I don't think uh, you need coffee. <laughs> Anyway, coffee is not good for this weather. <laughs> coffee is not good for this weather, isn't it? Yeah. Mr. Nyagaka, I want to know. I know you run a company on Nesha. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. You're into the business of presenting creatives, all right, to clients for paid work. Ray, I'm going to come to you. So I want you to listen carefully because mm -hmm. it's going to make a statement that is going to sort of drive this conversation this morning. What sort of gap did you realize is lacking in the creative industry in Kenya? Then that's when you decided to say, look, I think we need to fill it so that we can have a business out of it. Interesting, Elijah. Thank you for having me for the show. All right. And, um, Anytime, man. You're welcome. Thank Every you, Every single day. This is your home as well. <laughs> thank you, man. All right, thank all you. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm part of a company called Onesha. Mm -hmm. And what you do at Onesha is we partner with businesses yes. to enable them mm -hmm. um, give paid work yes. to various creatives. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about creatives, we mean designers, mm -hmm. um, content creators, yes. photographers, videographers, yes. digital marketers, and social media marketers. Mm -hmm. The reason we decided to create sort of that link between creatives and businesses mm -hmm. for was for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, most creatives, especially in Africa, um, find it difficult to find paid work. Okay. Someone, you can find someone has been, you know, uh, tamaking the entire of Nairobi for a month mm -hmm. to get uh, a client who can enable you, you know, design a logo for 5Gs. Yes. So, you know, the, the, the cost of acquisition for most creatives is very high and the amount of work they get is not up to their expectation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is one. Mm -hmm. Creatives not being able to find paid work. Mm -hmm. um, the second reason was most businesses um, struggle to find the right people to mm -hmm. work with mm -hmm. when, they in, when they need people who can actually execute smaller tasks. Yes. You know, some business, most SMEs in Africa you know, cannot be able to afford agencies, mm -hmm. Scanado, Glivy, and, and, and the likes, yes. you know, because they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. So there, um, there, there lacks uh, a business model or a business mm -hmm. that provides a complete package of what an agency offers, of, of what but, an at agency, an but at level. an affordable level. Yes. Roy, I, I want you to come in at this point, yes. right? Yeah. Just before we went on air and before KPLC decided to take us off air, <laughs> you said that you enjoy being a freelancer in that sense. Are you saying that your registered company, that is Grammar, Grammar Graphics, yes, yes. sort of, what do you mean when you say you enjoy being a freelancer? Okay, it, it really, I must say that most of this enjoyment is dictated by some of the clients we have. Mm -hmm. um, having noted in the um, informal mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. come with the clients also. Yes. So there are clients who really don't like being bound. Yes. You know, they are, they, w when you go to, 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 to the level of companies yes. or other transactions, mm -hmm. certain clients don't like the paperwork. Yes. And uh, a large volume of, mm -hmm. of, 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 let's say, the products that we, we, we give mm -hmm. or rather the clients that we meet, they, 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 they just don't like being bound. By yes. The invoices, mm -hmm. name it. Yes. They want it to, to be done with. Yes. Talk about posters, talk mm -hmm. about business cards, yes. certain things. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the other side where now Rama should rather pr play its part, mm -hmm. it's when you're dealing with the corporates. Mm -hmm. Because definitely you have to have a, a structure, you have to have accountability. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they want to know who, who these checks are being written to yes. for the auditing purposes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's why now, w when I gauge with the experience that I've had, mm -hmm. most, most of the times I've ended up being freelance uh -huh. or rather rama has been off 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 the cost off <laughs> off the cost isn't it yeah. so you you sort of just use rama when you sort of get this uh corporate who wants yeah i need to know who you are how long you've worked in this company yeah uh, and, and 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 your portfolio isn't it yeah yeah when it comes to the portfolio it, it comes to the portfolio mm -hmm. so now mm -hmm. Gata, yes is that where you come in now mm -hmm. and say, look, don't register your company. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like we're not saying most creatives should in fact register with the companies. We are saying um, they are even smaller. Most of, if you look at, uh, if you look at how the, the, the creative industry is structured in the country, mm. there are very, very small players in the creative industry mm -hmm. who, if they were to do some work collectively, mm -hmm. the output would be much bigger than yes. them doing things independently. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I want you to listen to what Roy is saying. Sure. 
he has this company called mm -hmm. Rama Graphics that is well registered, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. But most of the times, he, he finds him operating as a single entity mm -hmm. as opposed to Rama Graphics, so sort of push him in the business, mm -hmm. um, in the business sector mm -hmm. when it comes to designing his graphics. Do you think that is all right? Or should he continue to push Rama Graphics? Actually, the, if you look at where the world is going and how most people are making money in the world, mm -hmm. if you look at the global trends in general, mm -hmm. let me use an example. One of the biggest companies in the creative industry that is making billions of dollars a year is, is a company called Five and Upwork. Yes. And what makes them great is because they work with freelancers. Mm -hmm. yes. And if you, if you look at how the local creative industry is, is most people work independently. They don't, work, they don't want to be part of an ecosystem mm -hmm. that sort of looks at a bigger output. Yes. So the, the, the trend that most creatives in this country should follow, especially the design industry and mm -hmm. the production industry, is yes. being open to new avenues mm -hmm. on how they can actually make money. Yes. So we've worked with some of the creatives and they keep telling us, um, why should I be part of your network when I can actually get my own company to get that deal that you're saying? Yes. And if you look at that kind of explanation, it's actually good. Yes. And we're not like say people shouldn't register companies. They mm -hmm. should, in fact. They should. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, the, the mechanics of mm -hmm. all the unit economics of them doing some of the things independently, mm -hmm. they find it difficult for them to achieve some of the things. Yes. And he's mentioned something very interesting, for example. Um, most creatives don't want to deal with clients who require invoices, contracts, and all those things. And if you look at business, mm -hmm. That's where most businesses are actually going, even individuals. Mm -hmm. Because of the you know, tax compliance and all those things, people yes. want to have invoices of everything they're mm -hmm. doing. That, that everything they're doing. Would you yes. therefore say, mm -hmm. I know you've spoken to some of them, yeah. and Roy, I want you to listen carefully. Yes. If Nyagaka, because if Mr. Nyanga can say something that you really don't agree with, please come in. The creatives in the country mm -hmm. have been blamed to just having the talent you can say that we have talented people in Kenya when it comes to the creative industry. Especially we have talented graphic designers who would do even more for these other corporates and sort of represent themselves in a good way in front of their, in front of their clients. But Roy, mm -hmm. you have been blamed for neglecting one side, the business perspective to your talent. Is it true? Okay, well. What you find, you're just good at graphics, mm -hmm. that's fine. But now when you're told, okay, now how much have you made this year from these graphics? Mm -hmm. You have nothing to, to put onto that. Okay, I would really, I would, it's, it's what? It's a 50-50, it's a catch-20. In the sense that you could probably have, you, you can account for what you've done. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you, we, sorry for my voice. Mm -hmm. we, it's all right. Mm -hmm. We talk about the paperwork, mm -hmm. but in the industry, mm -hmm. I, I would agree with you in the sense that you, can be a creative, and then the entrepreneurial side of it. Mm -hmm. There is Kidogo a challenge. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you, you here you are trying to create, uh -huh. and you know in the creative world mm -hmm. you you create, and you you don't create everything e every time. Yes. The, it's based on passion. It's based on moods. We are artists, mm -hmm. and then at the same time you have to think about books, mm -hmm. accountings, mm -hmm. how to 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 better this business, how to compare, mm -hmm. it, it takes an extra. It takes, it takes extra, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. For and so are you agreeing it's indeed true? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. That yes. much I will agree. Yes. Truth be said, uh -huh. I will agree. You'll agree with that? I will agree because you, 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 here you are, you are creating and you have to play a counter at the same time. Yes. You and a marketer at the same time, marketer isn't it? At the same Advertiser time. at the same time. Advertiser at the same time. Yes. That is the cha that's a challenge. All right, Mr. Nyagaka, you've really spoken to these people mm -hmm. that you're trying to get on your platform. That's mm -hmm. on Nesha platform. Mm -hmm. You've known where they come from. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Um, what sort of market or what sort of market responds mm -hmm. to these clients? To these, to these, to these designers and creatives. That's an interesting question, Elijah. If you look at if most of the clients we dealt with for the past one year, mm -hmm. almost five hundred plus businesses. Yes. Uh, most of ninety percent of that segment mm -hmm. are small and medium enterprises. Yes. Why? Because they their budget to the creative side of their business mm -hmm. is very small. Yes. In that they are limited to only people or entities they can actually afford. Mm -hmm. So. The reason why businesses find it interesting to work with donations is because we have a pool of creatives that we can actually choose from. Which I want to ask you. Yeah. Now, Roy, I want you to listen carefully. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, there's, there's a pool. So I want, I want you to tell me, mm -hmm. is it not easy for you to sell one person mm -hmm. to a client mm -hmm. because you believe in this person? Take Mr. Roy now. I, yes. I, I, I will know he's done a job somewhere. He mm -hmm. looks amazing. As opposed to having a pool of people who 
the company would sort of look at it and say, okay, who do we go with? Mm -hmm. How does a recommendation to the clients then start? So uh, the way we've built our system, recommendation system, is we use a, a technology platform that mm -hmm. aggregates uh, who is the best person who is suited for the skill and mm -hmm. for the requirements of the, of the, of the client. Mm -hmm. Some clients might require very specific things that require very specific attributes and mm -hmm. skills from a designer. Roy, yes. is it possible mm -hmm. to look at, um, at a graphic designer mm -hmm. from a pool of graphic designers, just through a small portfolio of whatever they've done, okay. and sort of pick the best out of that? Okay, quite frankly, we, we are graphic designers. Mm. We know how to doctor things. Yes. So you can doctor a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So picking someone or someone's experience out of a portfolio, mm -hmm. to some extent, or to a larger extent, some clients really get dissatisfied. They come to you and they, they tell you, I was, I, I was duped into believing he can deliver. He can deliver. Based on what I saw. Yes. But when they look at the work now, or rather they, you, you are accosted by, do this for us in two days. Yes. That's where now the drama begins. Uh -huh. You find someone cannot deliver. Yes. Or rather the portfolio that they had mm -hmm. was not theirs. Yes. And sometimes when you go to clients, you find them, the common question they usually ask you is, is this your job? Is this really what you did? And if it is, give us a sample. Mm -hmm. They want a sample away from the portfolio mm -hmm. to believe what does that tell you? It tells you that set some of these portfolios that people put online mm -hmm. or rather they present mm -hmm. are never real. They are and most that's, that's an interesting question that he has brought in. Yes. Yes. And that is the hustle that you want to save clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you look at a client will spend when, when you're trying to decide, decide who to hire, you'll spend 90% of your time trying to understand, will this person deliver this the job? this person deliver the job? So what Onesha will do is we vet all these people before mm -hmm. we present them to clients. Yes. We have to give them sample tasks before we present them to the clients. Mm -hmm. We have to vet their skills by yes. doing physical interviews. Mm -hmm. We have to use an aggregation platform on what price fits what mm -hmm. the client wants. Yes. So when clients come to us, mm -hmm. they know the pool of people that we have, mm -hmm. they are fully vetted. Mm -hmm. So if there is any risk to be taken, it's Onesha that takes the it's risk. It's Onesha that takes the risk, isn't yeah. it? Now, Roy, I just want you to either agree or disagree mm -hmm. to what Mr. Nyagaka is going to say next, mm -hmm. all right? Because it represents the creatives and especially people who work for your side okay. deeply. I know you've looked at the, at the market in Kenya, mm -hmm. what people are going for, what they need, all right? Mm -hmm. And you will say that this market forces, all right, are the ones that are affecting the creative um, content market in the country. So what will you say are the top all right, market forces that sort of make the likes of Roy, mm -hmm. therefore not make money out of their entities? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think the number one contributing factor on why creatives are not making money in this country is because they don't know how to sell themselves. Roy, you would agree? Hmm. <laughs> cre you'll find a designer, you'll find a designer, you'll find, it's interesting actually, you'll find a designer, I'm yes. very good in motion graphics, I can make for you good logos, yes. Yes. but the way I present myself to the market, it's I don't have the skill to yes. present myself. Roy, yes. that's the first one, you don't know how to sell yourself, I need you to talk to me man, is it true? <laughs> Okay, you know, the, the beauty of social media, the beauty of the internet. Yes. Um, <laughs> say, I'll come back and then you talk to me while you're laughing sure, sure. when you mentioned social media. Yes, Mr. Roy, continue. Is that your job is there. Yes. The people you've worked for, mm -hmm. or rather the, the clients that you've had. Yes. People who know you. Yes. They do the job for you most of the time. Yes. Better than you walking into an office. Yes. Seeing all the marketing drama then. Yes. You have but how do you scale <laughs> that? <laughs> how do you scale that? <laughs> Roy, Roy, Roy believes, look, um, the people you worked for, mm -hmm. the social media you can sell yourself through social media, mm -hmm. and you have referrals mm -hmm. that of the people they've worked with, they will say, Roy is a good graphics designer. Mm -hmm. Then you laughed when he talked about social media. If you, look at, if you look at how, I mean, one of, some, of our, some of the creatives we're helping, yes. actually, them, we help the market their work on social media. Yes. Because if you look at, I mean, social media is not one of those things that you post, okay, I'll, I'll post my logo today and get a client. Yes. You have to have a sort of a strategy uh -huh. that enables you say, okay, today for this quarter, I'm going to target this set of clients yes. with this set of work that I'm posting. Uh -huh. Most creators don't have that strategy. Uh -huh. You know, they say, okay, I, I market myself on social media, but if you look at what they're posting, yes. it's not consistent it's not with consistent what they want to, to whatever it is market. They want. You know. Roy, yes. I, I want you to get back at that, man. Is it true that, is it true that you really don't know how to sell your product? Okay, let me make one thing clear. Yes. First, it takes time. It takes time. Mm -hmm. There's one thing, 
when, when I got into the graphics, yes, th there's this notion that most people have, you will make money overnight. Yes. You, you want to be Richard Branson tomorrow. You want to be, <laughs> you want to, <laughs> yes. you know, uh -huh. it doesn't happen overnight. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, takes, it takes time. Yes. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. You have to have that mind. You have to do research. Mm -hmm. You have to research about people online, of course, and then the people you know. Mm -hmm. There are those people, obviously, you've seen who've been in graphics yes. before. Uh -huh. How do they do it? You know, you don't have to be driving expensive cars to show that you've, been ma you've made it. Yes. You have to take your time to research, mm -hmm. and then you have to have that mentality that you have to wait. So that's why when you go online, or rather when you start, the, the, the client that you, it doesn't matter, even if it's a logo, yes. whatever you do, mm -hmm. somebody will notice it. Somebody will notice it. Here's the thing, Mr. Yeah. Nagaka. You talked about, yes, mm -hmm. he's saying all these things. You don't disagree necessarily. Mm -hmm. But you're saying, mm -hmm. how do you therefore scale that up? Yep. That's the main issue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. If you look at most businesses, and I think maybe you can chip in on this. If uh -huh. you look at, take an example, go to Kirinyaga Road and see how many designers will come, how many design shops will come along. Yes. They're doing logos, they're doing logos, they're doing mm -hmm. logos. Uh -huh. But if you look at the average revenue per month, it's, 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 it's basically paying their bills and paying, uh, you know, salaries. Uh -huh. So w that's where Onesha comes in. How can you help those 20 designers in Kirinyaga Road yes. who struggle to market their work every day mm -hmm. to access clients across the continent? Yes. Because one of the advantages of Onesha is we have the ability to scale. We have scaled our platform uh -huh. and we have a, a bigger chance of scaling the platform to other countries. Yes. We have clients, we have designers from Nairobi, from mm -hmm. our platform, yes. who, are, who are delivering their work to clients in South Africa, mm -hmm. Nigeria, yes. and Europe. Mm -hmm. Individual designers can do that because mm -hmm. for you to service a client in Lagos, you have to understand what does the client in Lagos need. Mm -hmm. A client in Nairobi will have different requirements from a client in Nigeria. From a client in Nigeria. So when we present our creatives to clients, we're able to, we're able to brief the designers. Yes. This client in Lagos requires A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. Can you do this? So the sort of... That's now one of the one of the areas we want creatives to understand in terms of how do you serve how different you customers serve in different, different markets? Different customers in different markets. Yeah. Right. Yes. I know there's a company that you have called Roma Graphics mm -hmm. that sort of represents you mm -hmm. anytime you get uh, this big um, business uh, uh, gigs that sort of need you to approach a corporate or a corporate approaches you. Mm -hmm. All right. But here's the thing, though. I want to ask you this question, and I want to be very very precise with it because we only have four minutes. I'm told. Okay. Is there a need mm -hmm. for creatives in the country? I know there are people saying, those representatives, mm -hmm. Mr. Nagaka, mm -hmm. I'm not saying this because you're doing it, but it's already there. They're ripping us. I don't understand why I need to present my graphics to Mr. Nagaka at Onesha mm -hmm. to represent me to a client, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. When I can do it myself, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Is there a need, therefore, for creatives to sort of say, my business model, because I'm just starting, mm -hmm. or I've not even broken even from yeah. all the investments that I've made around these graphics, okay. is I sort of have him mm -hmm. represent me with his company, all right, mm -hmm. have targets, mm -hmm. all right, to meet, mm -hmm. leave the marketing aspects to him, leave the advertising aspects to him, so that now the only thing I look at the end of the month is where is my money? Because I've delivered. Mm -hmm. Is that what we need? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah. Let's start with the yes, quickly. Okay, yes, because mm -hmm. they have a pool of clients. Yes. Ready clients, mm -hmm. that would say. Mm -hmm. You have a pool of ready sure, clients. Sure. Yes. Mm. That is good. That's a niche. Yes. But now, when you just sit around for him to do, what in the event that Onesha collapses, in the event mm -hmm. that you run out of business, what mm -hmm. happens to me? Mm -hmm. I go home. <laughs> because now, he has the clients. I wait for the money because I've delivered. Yes. What is the, now? Wh 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 what is the difference now between that and being employed and uh -huh. the company's run out of money and you've gone back home? Yes, so, mm -hmm. the red line there, mm -hmm. the red line there mm -hmm. that I really need you to attack, mm -hmm. yeah. is that the mentality that you sort of run into when you're trying to sell mm -hmm. to these clients? I mean, if you look at it's, it's you have to look at, if, for example, if you look at from the creative side in terms of. Are we getting assurance of uh, paid work from Onesha? Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you look at the designers whom we are currently working with, 90% mm -hmm. of them have paid work at least every month. Yes. At least every month there's something you're paying, paying them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they sit all day and wait for work to be given by Onesha. Yes. You also have to do your other things. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is we're coming in to mm -hmm. enable you open new channels of, 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 of customer acquisition mm -hmm. that can enable you 
you as a designer either have access to bigger brands we can work with mm -hmm. or have access to newer markets that we can actually deliver work. Yes. We have, a, we have one of the creatives that we work with actually at the moment. He says, Bernard, you're sending me too much work. You uh -huh, know, uh -huh. You're sending me too much work. Yes. I think now find someone else to do. Uh -huh. So what that enables the designers to do is they're able to, first of all, build a solid portfolio instead of duplicating portfolios mm -hmm. um, um, that you, you can say you have done logos for X and Y, but most of young starting out creators haven't done so. Yes. So we give them a chance to, mm -hmm. first of all, build a credible portfolio mm -hmm. from recognizable brands yes. that if they were to present themselves to other clients, like some, oh, you've worked with X and Y, you've worked mm -hmm. with Safaricom, you've worked yes. with X and Y. So that mm -hmm. makes the, the designers more interesting to mm -hmm. work with. I want you to listen to how Roy, that, um, I think that that will be among the last things that we are tackling sure. this morning. I want you to listen to how Roy uh, gets his clients. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we have to talk about the money in your pocket. And that means looking for clients on a daily basis, mm -hmm. knowing that I have these things to be met, all right? Mm -hmm. So now, Roy, mm -hmm. I, just want, I just want us to tell us, I just want you to tell us mm -hmm. how you would uh, sort of um, classify one job. In terms of, I put this much in, all right, to get this job. Mm -hmm. And so the return on this investment, which is usually the job, because now we're talking about you going freelance as opposed to using RAM graphics, yes. how much money you would, how do you classify each job in terms of how much money you get at the end of the day? Okay, first we, we, we look at the type of client who is coming in. Yes. And how much they require. Mm -hmm. Because you see, these clients, have different requirements yes. that will require different skill sets, mm -hmm. they require different materials. Yes. Certain things that they may require, the machines for that you may not have. Okay. All right. So that brings in networking mm -hmm. with the people you've met in the industry. Mm -hmm. You talked about Krinyagaru. Yes. They are the best for the networking world. Mm -hmm. They yes. have the machines, mm -hmm. you have the skill set, mm -hmm. you have the client. Yes. So you, th that is where now you start working. How, 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 how much do they need? How much do you really need? It's all built on the client. It's all built on the client. So you sort of get mm -hmm. your understanding of how much you're going to get out of this investment out yes. of this one client, isn't it? Out of this one client. Yes. And then, of course, you have to factor in mm -hmm. the economic situations and, of course, the fluctuations in the business, okay. in, the, in the industry. And that's, that, that's interesting. Yes. How, do you, that, how do you therefore understand mm -hmm. the fluctuations and situations in this business in the industry? So yeah. one of the points that you mentioned earlier was most of the designers don't have the resources to deliver some of the work they are given by clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. Onesha has the capacity mm -hmm. to deliver even work that creatives have been given and yes. they can deliver. So mm -hmm. a designer comes to us and says, guys, I've been given printing work for, 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 for one million, I mm -hmm. can't be able to deliver. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Onesha has the, 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 the resources mm -hmm. to enable some of the creatives to deliver mm -hmm. work they've been given. So it's yes. also a, a, you know, a, a two-way traffic. Also, it's also a two-way traffic. Yeah. Okay. I, I, would you say, Mr. Nyaka, just, just, I'm sorry to cut you short because now we have time. Mm -hmm. We're running out of time because I know we have only two minutes left. Would you say, Mr. Nyagaka, therefore, mm -hmm. that the only aspect that is lacking mm -hmm. in the creatives um, uh, side in Kenya is just for them to understand a business model that sort of works for them? Yes, they can be as good as you can be, mm -hmm. but if you don't understand how you're sort of going to approach the market, then you're losing out. That's correct. If you look at, uh, I mean, why do you think most businesses or why do you think most African-based businesses are still small businesses. Why? Because they don't have a strategy on how to approach a market that needs their product. You, if I, Again, I use an example of Kirinyagaru. Yes. Some of those businesses in that area have been there for the past 10 years. Yes. And they have the potential to do similar work that Canada can do. Mm -hmm. What Canada does better than them is yes. they have people who are able to think what the market needs. Mm -hmm. So what Onesha offers is we can package a solution in that if we're going to pitch for a job, mm -hmm. we can actually compete with Scanard mm -hmm. because we have a pool of designers who yes. can deliver the same work. Uh -huh. Internally, Onesha can do strategy, yes. so we enable our creatives mm -hmm. also learn over time. Here is how we can actually define a strategy that can enable my business be do 10 million yes. in five years uh -huh. from the current from half a million doing a year. Acquiring half a million so we also year. help designers yes. or creatives sort uh -huh. of learn progressive skills that yes. compound over time uh -huh. to enable themselves as people, uh -huh. um, scale their businesses yes. and earn extra skills in the process. All right. One, 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 one thing that I wanted to mention was the, the, one of the things we look at when you're trying to work, this, we don't just look at your portfolio. We take you in, we look at what is your, do you have a strategic way of thinking when you have, uh, when you're approaching a client? Yes. Do you do, you mentioned about research. Mm -hmm. Most, most, most of the young creatives, especially in the country, they just say, I want a logo and I just, I'll give you tomorrow. You know, sometimes it's not about delivery of work in time. Yeah. You have to make sure the client that 
Here is what I'll do. Here is the process I'll use. Here is the strategy I'll use to do this. And here is what this thing means for you in the market. For, for you in the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to ask you the last question there, Afo. Okay. I know you have experience. Mm -hmm. I know you have a must a client base. I don't know. There are people who say, when I need this, I just have to go to Roy. Do you see the need of therefore running away from being Roy, mm -hmm. the freelancer, mm -hmm. to being Rama Graphics? Yeah, there is a need. There is a need for that. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that be said, there is a need. Because yes. eventually, mm -hmm. some of these clients, mm -hmm. everyone is growing. Yes. And the one thing we assure our clients mm -hmm. is, is their growth. Yes. Of course, we are there to market their products for their growth. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, they will no longer be this this little business, yes. tomorrow there'll be a company. Yes. And they'll want to deal with you company to company basis. Company to company so that's basis. Why they need to go mm -hmm. back to Rama. Mr. Nyagaka, mm -hmm. when you listen to Roy, he's mm -hmm. an experienced uh, graphics designer, mm -hmm. he's got a clientele base. Just in one in, in 15 seconds, eh? yeah, 15 mm -hmm. seconds. Tell me why he needs to come to Onesha. The reason you have to come to Onesha is because we enable you to reach clients at scale that you cannot be able to reach. Okay. We want one of the biggest advantages we have for Onesha is a client who is based in San Francisco can work with a designer who is based in Nairobi. Okay. Because they are currently have designers who deliver that kind of work. Okay. All right. Yeah. Roy, after this, I think you, you gentlemen need to talk. <laughs> we All right. Will. We will. Sort of exchange numbers. And then after <laughs> that, we see how we can sort of having these conversations on social media. That is a Metropole TVKE. All right. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, I was told they're still making my Twitter handle, so I'm actually there. At Charles underscore Kiyage. Ask me any question. If you want to talk to Mr. Nyagaka, I'll be right there answering those questions for you. Guess what? It's been a lovely two hours on Business AM. You can get me again at 1 p.m. as we go through the business news at 1. And then tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, and even Friday. All right. Good morning. Good day.